On Larry King now, deadliest catch captains, Jonathan Hillstrand and Wild Bill Wachowski. The success is because it's fishing and it's honest, hardworking guys, and it's, it's the only real reality show out there. It's adrenaline. I mean, it's once you have a, a job that takes your adrenaline level that high, yeah. What do you go to? What do you go to next? There's nothing like having to compete yeah. with 40, 50 foot and, waves. And there's only uh, 60 ships, and you know, there's less than 400 of us in the world that do what we do. Really? 400 of us bring all the crab to the plates. Plus, this may seem weird. You ever feel sorry for the crabs? All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, and we welcome two veteran crabbing captains from the Discovery Channel's hugely successful reality show, Deadliest Catch. Jonathan Hillstrand, known for his onboard pranks, is the captain of Time Bandit. And Wild Bill Wichrowski, recognized for his hard work and honesty, he's the skipper of Cape Caution. The landmark 10th season of Deadliest Catch airs Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Discovery Channel. You realize, of course, Jonathan and Bill, that you are both semi-insane. <laughs> yes, and I, I don't, And this, for the record, I don't miss that yet. <laughs> we get the bug to go out there, but I don't really miss that right now, do you? How many years you've been doing this? 34. What took you into this profession? My, my father did it, and I remember he used to sail off in the sunset like the cowboy at the end of the movie and leave me with all the women and <laughs> and uh, and he made he brought my own the box, but now I just want to stay home with all the women. <laughs> Where was this? Where you live? Out of Homer, Alaska. We we lived right on the beach, beautiful place. Captain Cook named it after himself, Cook Inlet. And uh, man, wow, I, you live in there too? Actually, I found my job in Seattle. I was playing billiards with a guy, taking hundreds off his big wad. And I said, "What do you do for a living?" He said, "I'm a crab boat guy in Alaska. I work on a deck of a crab boat." I said, well, you're stupid. If you're making that kind of money, I'm, being a, I'm gonna be a rock star one day. Yeah. And it, that was the bug that got me, and that was 36 years ago. Is it good money? Forget television, obviously, is good money. Is crabbing good money? Well, we have to keep our day jobs. We, we actually uh, make more money crab fishing. I, I, I make a quarter million dollars a year just off my crab, just crab, money, fishing. Just crab fishing. Without the TV. Yeah, so, I'll, I mean, I, I've had fans that go, we, we made you, and I go, you didn't make me. And then they go, well, you'd be nothing without us. You'd go back to the ghetto. I go, well, I'll go back to my crab boat. <laughs> what, what kind of crabs are you looking for? We have two seasons. We have king, where there's various kinds of king. There's red, blue, and uh, brown. brown crab. And then we do the tanner season, which is baradai and apelio. So Snow crab. Snow crab in the market. Do you have a certain kind of allotment? You suppose? I remember the movie The Perfect mm -hmm. Storm. Yeah. Was that crabbing? In no, New they, they were they were uh, bill fishing or uh, sword fishing. Sword but fishing. They had to bring in a certain yeah. amount every day, and, and they got and, just... and they got greedy, and that's why they died. And greed is a lot of part, and you have to have a good captain with good senses, and and you don't want to overload your boat, or you know you got to. How you many gotta, boats do you have? We each have one. Um, you captain yours. You captain yours. Yeah, I'm a hired gun. What do you mean? He doesn't I just, own his I, boat. I don't own the boat. I've got a couple ex-wives, and so I. <laughs> I just run somebody else's boat. But it, it must be tough also on the cameraman. Yeah, we... Uh, well, I mean, we see them shooting. Some of those they, guys are A-type guys. Yeah, and, they got to be a little nuts, they, too, right? nuts. I mean, and they're on the boat, right? And then some of them want to come out just to have their name on, on Delia's Catch that I did it. And th those guys go, what did I get myself into? And they don't work out well. But that's what they send, too, so they always get the job done. And the reason why the, the show's gotten so well is the cameras are so much smaller, high def, yeah. and they put them everywhere, so they don't miss nothing. There's nothing we can do they don't see us doing. Do you ever have a calm day at sea? Every once in a while. You just go out yeah. and casually catch the crabs. And you'll ne for seldom about, see that on the we'll show. You'll never see that. <laughs> you'll never see that on for, the show. For about 12 hours before the next, every four days a low will come ripping through. And, and we, all, our, all our storms are from the eastern atmosphere. So there are cyclones and typhoons. We don't get uh, the hurricanes and the tornadoes. Um, and they come up through, um, it's from the Eastern Hemisphere. We're right there 
Actually, Alaska is the first island on the Eastern Hemisphere called Semi Sabachinoi. We had a storm that was 128 knots in Dutch Harbor before the speed deal blew out. This I was coming in on my boat. I'm a 108 foot boat. We fished through it. Is safety first or crab quota first? Yes. Safety. Oh. Yes. <laughs> we, every every day we uh, waste is six or seven thousand dollars fuel and bait. So if you waste your drag of your feet, you know, ten days, ten extra days is sixty thousand dollars. You don't get to split up. It's kind of time spent, money made. You know, every it, it, the quicker you get it done, the more you make. It's What's the Jonathan? Is the lure money, or do you is, is this kind of enjoy it? I'm really good at what I do. I love what I do. When I'm stuck in town, I've been hurt a few times. It kills me. But the money is what gets you. And like my guys this year, in in 12 days, made fifty-four thousand dollars. In uh, I mean the, the lure of the ocean and everything. But you know what's going to bring them back? That fifty-four thousand dollars. What what do you, what's? It's adrenaline. I mean, it's once you have a, a job that takes your adrenaline level, adrenaline level that high. Yeah. What do you go to? What do you go to next? You know, and I've we've been doing over 30 years of peace. And I went and I did the sport fishing thing for a while, which there's adrenaline addicts, excitement, the chase of the fish, you're on the water, you're on a boat, but there's nothing like having to compete yeah. with 40, 50 foot and, waves. And when you're in that storm and it's blowing 100 knots and you got 80 foot seas, you can't, you never hear better or see better or hear, you're never more alive than you are in that storm. Ever lose in anybody at sea? No. I, um, I pulled ten, I pulled nine guys out of the water, um, five alive and four dead. I pulled one guy out of the water that was alive, but he, he was in just a little too long and he died on my boat. So you've so, lost people? Yeah. You have? Was, no. Next, what can we expect season 10 will bring us of the deadliest catch? Stay with us. Before we get to season 10 of The Deadliest Catch, I'm told that in 2005 there was a change in crabbing legislation which made the job less competitive. What was that? It's, it's still competitive. What they did was they come in and uh, they take 10% the native quota off. Uh, it's called the Community Development Quota. They Who take takes? They take 20, the government. Who's they? Uh, and they, they take the enforcement of tax off. They take 5% uh, buyback program tax, they take 5% buyback program tax, 3% over the dock tax, 27% right off the top, and uh, then we get to go fish. Alaska or the federal government? The, well, Alaska takes the, the tax, the 3%, Next. but it, but it used to just be we needed a card and a piece of paper and the 3%, and we were mad about the 3%, and now the government comes in, mm. and I, you know, and I'm not gonna say nothing bad about anybody, but we, we were doing fine without them. <laughs> That's all I can say. Is that okay to say that? Yeah. Are you ever distracted by the fact that you're being filmed? You know, I'll, I'd like to say no. Um, you can see there's times where we will just draw the line and say, it's a safety thing. Just get out of my face. I'm going to continue on. So we, we shut them down when we have to. And we've thrown them off our boat at the yeah. dock. Now, I understand the season 10 starts with the fishermen dealing with the government shutdown, right? Right. Causing them to be grounded. Why did they shut you down? Because we're missing one piece of paper. And then, uh, actually, uh, you remember the gentleman's name that said, go ahead and go fishing. It's just a piece of paper. He had the paper. And the guy above him said no. And we're all 12 hours out. We had to all turn around. And they, people well, don't what, What's the red tape? What um, is it? Because it was a permit. There's a bunch of different federal permits. There's This permit told us exactly how many pounds of crab we got to catch. Because the way it is now, you get a percentile because of history of catch, of the allotted catch. So whatever your percentage is, they divide it into the allotted catch. And they knew the we knew our percentage, but somebody didn't take that number and divide it into the other number, so we did not have that in print. And we had already paid for it. We paid for that. We, it doesn't it, come from- It comes out of the top 5% enforcement tax is already paid for. Huh. Just so. because there wasn't somebody there to hit print. It cost us 20% of our income for the king so, crab season. This may seem weird. Do you ever feel sorry for the crabs? Yeah, you got a lonely little crab they, they out there. They don't scream. No? And, and, uh, so you don't have any and, and we're not the guy that kills them. We keep them alive. Oh, you bring them in alive. And then the, then the cannery guys oh. got to worry with that. They can oh, let them it. go after they buy them and let I'm them free. some young fishermen joined the ranks this season, right? Right. Do you feel threatened when these youngsters come aboard? Are they hale and hearty? Are they quicker than you? 
they they are in the wrong spot all the times, and they don't listen to you. And well, I think like, Larry's talking about young captains. Oh, young captains. Young guns. Well, they all oh. talk about how good they are, but. Usually when you get a cocky guy that goes, I'm the best, I'm this, I'm that, he's not. Well, what makes a good one? What makes a good one? Humble. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be willing to uh, do things for the right reason and not... What talent do you have to have? I mean, what's, do you need reflexes? Do you need... Yeah, you need, uh, you need to be good with sleep deprivation. You, having a good mechanical background is essential because when all goes wrong, the, when the boat's gonna, about to sink, everybody's gonna look to the captain for the answer. And you need to know how to deal with your people and they have to trust you to go to, into hell and back with you. And, uh, you know, we're talking these... about these big seas. The crew will come upstairs when the boat takes a horrible roll, and they'll look at you to see what your expression is. And you can't really show them fear. You have to look at them and just go, what are you guys doing up here? Go back How many to in a crew? Six to seven. I run four. I run a small, I have a smaller boat, so I have a smaller crew. And, and I always get mad at you for that, because if someone gets hurt, you're down to three, you're pretty much. We always catch our So I, I bring five, and then you can always bring in someone to cook. They're filming on both boats? Yeah. Yeah. Do you so now we, have a woman on board? I wish. No. I thought that... The, the reason why we don't have the I women... I thought we meet a female crew member in season well, 10, or have I been yeah. given the wrong no, information? No, you the right nope. stuff. Sig brought it's, his daughter. But it's his daughter, and she's got her cousins and her uncles and stuff out there with her. And what but do they do? They help her. They're on the Northwestern. They're watching out for her. They're on a different boat. Yeah, they're on the Northwestern, and it's a Norwegian family. And oh, yeah. I mean, that's generations and generations and a, of going to sea. What do you tough, think of women? She's a tough gal. The, the reason why it doesn't work is because the, the wives and the girlfriends at home, and you bring this girl out there, they're going, what? This ain't, no, it ain't going to happen. You're going to bring another guy. You know, this that boils down to it. Yeah. You lost someone that I interviewed in the past, Phil Harris. Right. No, he, die? he didn't die on a ship, right, did he? Yeah. He, well, he uh, got a stroke out there. Oh, really? And then uh, that eventually was the end of him. Um, he, he died in town in the hospital. But he, he was without oxygen for over 12 hours, so it wasn't uh, good. But we How old was he? 53. Oh, too young. And it's a, there's a high-stress job, and a lot of us chain smoke, which isn't good. And a lot of us drink heavy in town which, you know, that isn't good in itself either, but it seems to go hand in hand with the job of the high stress job. Yeah. There's only uh, 60 ships and, you know, there's less than 400 of us in the world that do what we do. Really? 400 of us bring all the crab to the, you know, to the plates. Is so, Phil Harris's son involved now? Yeah, and he actually, you'll see him in uh, El Pelio season this year. Second half. And uh, he'll, he'll bring the boat out and he's got a captain to help him and hope he'll get rid of that captain and take over. And, and we're, we have high hopes for, for... Are you surprised at the success of this show? Ten no, years. It's, no, it, it's great. I actually got out and went sport fishing for a while, and then I, these guys are calling me saying, what are you doing? you got to get... John and Andy brought I, me back in. I tried to get out, but they brought me I, back. I think the success <laughs> is... <Thank you>. I <laughs> think the success is because it's, it's not scripted. It's, they, they might play on the camera, play, you know... A uh, little bit, but it's fishing and it's honest, hardworking guys, and it's it's the only real reality show out there. More with the deadliest catch captains Jonathan Hillstrand and Wild Bill Wachowski. So far, you don't feed too wild. <laughs> we'll be right back. We are, we are back with Jonathan and Wild Bill. Are you wild? It you know it comes with a reason. <laughs> Is he wild? Yeah, I've I've seen him fighting six guys at one time in the. <laughs> And I've been there with him. And uh, remember that? And it broke out into about 60 people in a whole barroom brawl. And what they did was they kicked the, they shut the bar down for one hour, kicked us all outside. And then we all, we all got to get let back in. It was shots for everybody. There was blood still all over the floor. And it was like is the this, old Is West. this your profession or is this Alaska? It's Alaska. It is Alaska. Alaska was, you know, deemed the last frontier, the, the last of the West. And when we started, it was true. I mean, there were gunfights, knife fights. Yeah. It was almost lava. The, the elbow room was deemed the world's most deadliest bar. Ten years in a row. Um, there was like four people died one year in that bar from bar fights. And I've been ejected like 15 times out of that bar. Yeah. No. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Jonathan, you have described as a prankster. Yeah, like, was... like, what do you like to do? Well, yeah, we, we prank, and it gets us through, you know, and uh, when you, it breaks the monotony up. I did a uh, 
hot air balloon thing where they have those Chinese, Chinese lanterns. lanterns. Yeah, that was so and nice. I, and it was, I came down wind from SIG. I snuck in his radar. He thought it was like UFOs, and he went, it's a, it's a jet liner, it's a helicopter. You ever seen those Chinese lanterns? They're yeah. like rice paper with a... And he, yeah. he I just kept sending them downwind. And then, uh, you, your you. motto is hard work and honesty. Do you yeah. think you're feared as a captain? By some. Uh, you work on intimidation? Sometimes. My dad was an ex-Marine Corps DI, so that's what I was raised with. Uh, let's better understand the duties of the crew members. Can what I tell you it? a story about him? <laughs> Go ahead. He, well, he had a, a bunch of guys, and they, uh, they hurt a bunch of people pretty bad. And these are big Samoan guys. Hurt them? I mean, hurt, like, hurt them, put them in the hospital. So, uh, well, Bill come down and got his AR-15, cocked it, shot a couple of rounds out the window, and said, all right, everybody at the table, put your hands on the table. Anybody with bloody hands? He broke their hands with the stock of the gun, and they were fired. Why so that's you, why they call him Wild Bill. Why did you do that? They were going to eject us from town. They were going to tell us we weren't allowed to bring the vessel back to town anymore. We couldn't and these home are, base there. We couldn't bring our crab there. It was going to change us financi financially. Have you done any jail time for this? Negative. No, this is marine law. It used to be yeah. the Wild West. Oh, this is years ago. Yeah, this is 20 years ago. Okay. So let's just yeah, tell We don't me. condone this. Do not. Yeah. Don't try this at home. Okay. Tell me what these guys do. What does a deck boss do? He's in charge keeping morale up, making sure no one makes a stupid mistake, keeping the greenhorns in their place. And making it, sure the job's so, complete. So Every, all the parts and pieces have to be there. Yeah, nobody makes a mistake. He, he, he commutes to the captain. We need yeah. bait. We need parts. We need this. We're out of Chain twine. Command, captain, deck bus. What's the engineer do? Machinery. Make sure the boat's running. It's maintained. We have all the Check, parts and pieces. Change oil. You know, all the checks and balances. Deck hand. He's the grunt. He's the backbone. Green dummy, green dingling, green dingling, or just dummy. Greenhorn is a new one. He's yeah. the guy that takes all the crap. It's probably the toughest job he's on the He's learning. Because he what's doesn't know what he's doing. So he's, what's a typical rookie mistake? Signing up on the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is life like on dry land? Are you happy? How, how often are you home? How often are you out? We, it's more dangerous for us on dry land sometimes <laughs> than it is out there. We, we, uh, in a month, in 30 days, how often are you out? How often are you in? Well, our, month, our seasons usually last three months, but we've, I've been off the boat since the 5th of March. My house is in Mexico. I've been home five days yeah. since the 5th of March. In, in between trips, we don't get to go home. We're stuck in Dutch Harbor. Dutch Harbor is a seven-day journey just by boat and the seven days to get back home. Dutch Harbor's got a church, a couple bars, an airport. Um, there's a girl behind every tree. There's three trees. Um, <laughs> there's not that much to going on in Dutch Harbor booze and supplies. What's so, it like now in Alaska? You have long, long days in summer, right? right. And short days in winter. And we mm -hmm. fish all winter, winter. so we, you figure it out. So we're up so, there when it's dark most of the day. Dark most of the time. And we have sodiums like you see at football fields. And we make our own light, so there's no excuse to quit fishing. How do they light the cameras for the crew, taking the pictures for the... Ambient light from the installed lighting. We've started to switch over to LED lights, which has worked out really good yeah. for photography because it, I'm sure all your staff would understand that. But How do you like living in a place where there's sunshine 20 hours a day and then the sunshine two hours a day? I, I like the 20 hours. I love summers there. I'm, I'm, got, I'm gonna fish a couple more years and I'm gonna start migrating. The birds got something going on, you know, where they migrate. I think I'm gonna start following them. I, I, I went years. south years ago. I've had a place down in Mexico for 15 years now. And I mean, since I've been off the boat, I've been down in Costa Rica, the Florida Keys, Mexico. I, you can when see, I get off the boat, I, I go warm. You can see the tan. <laughs> Is there an age where you're too old to do this kind of work? You know, Your body will tell you. Your yeah. body, will, when you can't, I mean, I've recently lost some weight because my knees were just killing me. And it's in their heart and soul. But 50-year-old Deccan is pushing it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's there's a, no 60-year-olds, are there? There's mm -hmm. been a handful. The guy on the Maverick was an old cat. But they're usually they're usually just at the hydraulic station. They're not running around. They're not throwing shots in and out of pots. But you'd be surprised. Some guys. I mean, 60's not that old anymore. It's crazy. Uh -huh. It's a new 40. It's, it is. I swear to God, it is. In fact, if you're 103, it's the new 90. There you go. <laughs> when we return, Jonathan and Wild Bill will take your questions. We'll play a little game of If You Only Knew. Back with the deadliest catch. Don't go away. 
back with Jonathan and Wild Bill, two of the great guys, part of the deadliest catch in his 10th year on the Discovery Channel. It airs Tuesdays at 9 p.m. It's been an enormous success. What do you do when the show ends? I go ride my motorcycle, uh, get my cars out. I got a lot of hot rods. Love my grandkids, love my family, barbecue. What do you do? I sport fish, um, I golf. At least I go out on the golf course. I've got horses in Mexico. I swing a club, I'll give you that. We have some social media questions for you. Dave Dowling on Facebook. Do you have any desire to run for office? No, i would be too honest, I would never win. No, I don't think politics are, although our job's very political, I don't think why, politics why are right. Why would very political? Well, you're always in the middle trying to, you're on the edge between pushing a crew too far and trying to keep them within all the OSHA regulations and rights and it's, it's just you're managing people. Was Sarah Palin a fan of this show? Yes. Yes. At PJ512C on Twitter wants to know, does the media give appropriate coverage of crabbing to inform people of the dangers? I do believe so. It's a very accurate depiction. Your show is showing it the way it is, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. Is there anything you leave out? Well, we... If we leave it out, no. No, <laughs> no we don't leave anything out. Daniel Pariski on Facebook. What's the average time it takes a greenhorn to get over seasickness? How often do they quit because they can't continue to work? We've had two quit, and you can only go with hot water for three days, and you, you start shutting down and dying. Kidney failure. But I, I, I get seasick, and it takes me you about do? two days to get... I just keep drinking, though. I keep forcing myself drinking and eating, and I'll throw up out that window, and I'm pretty sneaky at it. But um, after about the second day, get your sea legs back. And then I'm good, good till the next year. I could never take that. It's, it's the evilest, most mean thing, and it's, it's just miserable. But I, I, I stay off. I couldn't stand that. I actually, tears come out of my eye, like one little tear. You get seasick. You know what? On a rare occasion, but it, it's not a question of ma masculinity. It's an inner ear imbalance, and that's yeah. what happens after a while. You either get used to it, or some people never get it's used to like it. It's just like being dizzy, and it's like. Being drunk and hugging the toilet, and you know how oh, bad a lot you feel. of laughs. Yeah. So you throw up a lot, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You throw up a lot, but the problem is, if you get dehydrated, you have to keep drinking. You have to defy it, and if you just go with it, you're a dead man, and you're not going to make it. Trick go is, on. you eat red licorice, so when you throw up, it doesn't taste bad. It looks like <laughs> looks like you're throwing up blood. Then it's red. <laughs> uh, you got an interesting life. Uh, we'll play a game of if you only knew. I will right, we'll start with, quickly for you, Jonathan, remember the first girl you ever kissed? Yes, I do. What was her name? Tammy. How old were you, Jonathan? Fourteen. Where was this? It was, in my, it was in a car. In a car? In a car. Were you driving? It was my car, and my parents were out at church, Thursday night church, and I, I already bought a car. And I Fourteen ran, years and old? And when I was kissing her, I hit a fence. <laughs> and I, I got in trouble for hit and run. <laughs> and then uh, her family never let us ever see each other again. What was her name? Tammy. Tammy. You ever find out what happened to her? No, I'd love to. She, I, I loved her. I fell in love with her. I was in love with her. Wild Bill, who's the first girl you ever kissed? I think her name was Kim. I was probably 12 or 13. Where I'm was from that? the East Coast, so we started Where? early back then. Where was that? It was outside of Pittsburgh. It was in my buddy's basement that lived a couple houses down. You have an embarrassing woman on camera. Yeah, I fell in between the boats one time uh, in, uh, in the water. Um, you might have saw it on TV. What about you, Wild well, Bill? You know, every once in a while I get embarrassed. <laughs> I lose my head, and they always kind of zoom right in on it. Oh, you get, you, get, you get angry? Yeah, I get angry. And sometimes people assume that I'm angry, and I'll meet them, and they kind of give me a look, and little kids shy away and stuff. It's not comforting all the time. Kids cry when you hold them. What's the song currently on your iPad? Currently on my iPod, any rock and roll song. What about you? Will? I'm across the board. I do a lot of blues. I do a lot of jazz. And I do uh, lots of rock. I mean, we all grew up with rock on the deck. Favorite seafood? King crab. <laughs> and lobster. Lobster. Yours. I'd probably eat crab, and I like smoked blackout too. Kippered blackout. I don't know if you've ever had that. It's, no. It's, Plans after you retire? Lots of lots of islands and sand and beaches. Sand between my toes. What was your reaction to the movie The Perfect Storm? Good, bad, and ugly. Um, did you like the film? 
It, it strayed from accuracy. I mean, we're all about doing it the real way. They had a guy out on an outrigger with a burning torch. He went yeah. under the water and came up in the torch. But the cable work. goes up to a pulley, down to a winch, and he could have just stood there and cut it off right here, and the so whole thing would have fell off. Being on the boat, on the boats, we kind of tore it apart. You ever watch a movie and go, that doesn't seem right. That was in a newer car, just little things. There was a lot of little yeah. things in there. But but we've seen waves like that. We've, we've been out in 100 foot seas, and... Uh, my hats go off to, it was, that yeah, was a real story. It was story. a sad story. It was, I mean, it was, it was sad story. because. I was on the submarine, the USS Ohio, uh, a nuclear sub, and I went down with the, went on the, and the, they told me they were underneath that perfect storm. And wow. it was the worst they've ever had it on a submarine. Really? And they, they were, were way, moving around way too. below. Wow, that's. Yeah. They, they got the worst of it and had trouble getting out. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, it was a sad story. I mean, yeah, we don't was... want to make light of it. But you it's... have a ritual before hitting the Bering Sea. Yeah, definitely be with a woman and uh, <laughs> get your body slams in. <laughs> well, you know, I'd like to take care of maintenance, make sure I have all my parts and pieces. Oh, uh, yeah. You have a lucky okay. charm? <laughs> we have this little cookie monster that we got out of a Lucky Charms box that we still have him. He's like 30 He's your mascot. years old, yeah. I have a new one every season. I hang a blue water fishing lure in my wheelhouse, and I shake it like a good luck charm, and then after the season, I take it and I rig it, and I put it in my on my boat. I admire you guys. You're the best. Thank you, Harold. Thank Thanks, you. Sorry. It's a pleasure. We, we admire you, Larry. Oh. You're, you're the best. Thanks to my guest, Jonathan Hillstrand and Wild Bill Wichrowski of The Deadliest Catch. Be sure to tune in to season 10 of The Deadliest Catch. It airs Tuesdays at 9 o'clock on the Discovery Channel, and you can always find me on Twitter at Kings Things. And I'll see you next time. Dive! <laughs>